Hi students, in this video we will be going over how to evaluate functions. So first of all I wanted to start with a quote that I found and the quote says, failure is so important. We speak about success all the time. It is the ability to resist failure or use failure that often leads to greater success. I've met people who don't want to try for fear of failing. And that's from JK Rowling who met, who wrote the uh, Harry Potter series. And I think that this quote is very important because you can't do anything great if you don't try. And sometimes when you try, you're gonna fail. And if you remember in class, I always tell you guys that I don't care if you fail as long as you at least tried. Well, I care a little bit if you fail, obviously. But we want at least that you have tried, even if you fail a homework assignment, as long as you have tried. That's all that matters because you can learn from that failure. All right, so our essential question for these set of notes are, how are functions evaluated given equations, tables, and graphs? So once again, our essential question is, how are functions evaluated given equations, tables, and graphs? All right, so the first part of our notes is going to be on understanding function notation. And when we write um, functions, it's got a very specific uh, format or notation that we follow. But first, let's look at what we're going to be looking at in a few lessons. And that's called what is the slope intercept form. And basically what this is, is it is a form that tells us how we can graph an equation. And we're going to talk about that later. But the important part of this is that, remember, when you have a coordinate plane and when you graph, you have an x value and you have a y value. Now what this tells you is how can I create a line from that? And that is a very important topic that we're going to go over in a few lessons. So don't worry about it too much yet, but it will relate to what we're doing a little bit today. So in functions, the equation is usually written as f of x equals 5x plus 2. Now it's not always 5x plus 2. It might be another set of numbers and variables, but usually you see something with an f of x. It could also be a g of x or a h of x, and it equals something. And usually there's a x right there for the x value and a plus 2. Now if you look at the one from the previous slide, you're going to see that looks very similar, except there was a y in place of the f of x. Now really all f of x is is it's just y. It's just a different way of writing a y value. So basically f of x is y or f of x equals y. All right, so usually functions will be represented as f, but as I mentioned earlier, they could also be represented as other letters. The only other letters you're not going to usually see it represented as is x or y, okay? Because that would be confusing with our coordinate plane, which has x and y values. Now, one thing that is important about this is to note is that the x is our input and the f is the function name. So this is kind of like the input side, and whatever is the input of x, whatever you put in place of x, basically creates a output. So for whatever thing that you have inputted, it will create a specific and unique output. Okay. So let's look at a couple examples of these so it starts to begin to make a little bit more sense. So evaluating functions with equations. Now I want you to think back for a second to some of our examples from evaluating expressions. And this looks probably very familiar to you, where you've been given an expression and you're told what the variables represent and you have to put the numbers in for the variables and simplify. So for instance, the two goes where the x's were and the negative three goes where the y was. And then we simplify. Three times two is six and five times negative three is 15. So those, once multiplied, simplify down. 6 plus negative 15 is a negative 9. Negative 9 minus 4 then is negative 13. And negative 13 plus 2 is 11. Now, if you're very comfortable with this concept, today's notes and tonight's homework assignment is going to be very simple for you. So let's look at some examples in a second. So evaluating functions requires the same process. To evaluate a function, you have to replace the variable with a given number or expression and simplify. So we have a few steps here. And the steps are that first you have to figure out, am I 
putting in a number. Am I replacing or substituting the number into the x value or the y value? Then you actually substitute it in, and then you solve. So let's look at an example, because then I think this is going to make a lot of sense. So in this problem, it says you have f of x, which remember is y, equals 2x plus 4. Find f of 4. So you're probably thinking, what does that mean, f of 4? Where did the x go? Well, really what it's saying is that x equals 4. That's why that was replaced. And wherever you see an x, you're going to put a 4. So if I was to rewrite this, well, first, that x, it used to be an x before, but now it's a 4. And since this is also an x, it's also going to be replaced by a 4. So now you can see all the x's were replaced by a 4. And really all this is saying up here is find y. Find what this left side is. So we really leave this side alone, and we focus on the right side. 2 times 4 is 8, and 8 plus 4 is 12. So really this is just saying f of 4 equals 12, y equals 12. And more importantly, think back to our last notes where we said there could only be one x value associated with one specific y value. And this probably makes a little bit more sense now because if I put 4 back into this equation up here, it's always going to give me 12. 4 can't ever give me another number, which is why I can only have one x value associated with one specific y value or output value. No matter what, anytime that I have a 4 in this function, it's going to give me a 12. So let's look at another example. So once again, we have our steps. And when we look at this problem, we can see that it says g of x equals negative 3x minus 5. And it wants us to find g of negative 2. Now once again, that x has disappeared. And it has been replaced by that negative 2, which means this time we're trying to find the x value. Okay, I'm sorry. We have the x value and we're trying to find that y value or this function on the left side. So wherever you see an x, it's going to be replaced with the negative 2. So here was an x and it's been replaced with negative 2. There's an x here as well, which means that is also going to be replaced with a negative 2. Now remember, we're just trying to find out what is g of negative 2. Whenever x is negative 2, what will the function equal? Negative 3 times negative 2 is 6, and 6 minus 5 is 1. So this is saying any time the function has put in a negative 2 for the x value, it will always give a 1. Any time that I put in negative 2, it couldn't, it couldn't give me another number. It's always going to be 1, which relates back to those previous notes about how to recognize what is a function and what is not a function. All right, so example number three. This one's a little bit different. And what this one is saying is f of x equals 6 plus 8, so that looks familiar. But now it's saying that it wants you to find x when f of x equals negative 4. Now, one thing to note is see that this negative 4 is not in place of the x. We actually do not know what x is, and that is the point of this problem. So when we look at steps over here, we... Um, and when it says determine whether you have the x value or the y value to replace, we know that f of x is y, and all of f of x is going to be negative 4. So that's going to end up actually going on the left side. So think about substituting this in. f of x is negative 4. I can simply replace f of x with negative 4. And what that leaves me with is x, and that makes sense because in the problem it says, for us to find x. And for us to be able to find x, we don't know what it is, which means we do know what f of x is. And so we're going to put negative 4 on that left side, and now we have an equation to solve. The opposite of adding 8 would be to subtract 8 from both sides. Negative 4 plus negative 8 is a negative 12, and these cancel out, leaving us with 6x. When we divide 6 by both sides, we find out that negative 2 equals x. And so what we know is that negative 2 is the x value in this equation. And you could even plug that back in. You could say f of negative 2 equals a negative 4. 
So I have a few problems for you here to pause your video and try them out and then put the answers into Edpuzzle and see how you do. So pause the video and try these problems out real quick. All right, so the next part is evaluating functions with a table. So example number one says f of x is 5x minus 6. So if we know what the x value is, then what are all the f of x values or the y value? And all that you do here is you just plug in the number where you see the x is. So on this first one, do you see how there is a 1 associated with the x? I take that 1 and I put it where an x used to be here and where an x used to be there. Okay, 5 times 1 is 5. So f of 1 equals 5 minus 6, and 5 minus 6 is negative 1. So what this says is that any time that x equals 1, f of x, or y, has to equal negative 1. And you can start filling that into your chart. Now what about if we have f of 2? So now we're going to take 2, and we're going to replace all the x's in the function. So f of 2 equals 5 times 2 minus 6. All those x's were replaced with a 2. 5 times 2 is 10, and 10 minus 6 is 4. So any time that we have an x value that is 2, it's going to produce a function that is equal to 4. And that can go over to our table as well. And finally, for this 3, we're going to do the exact same thing and put the 3 into everywhere there was an x. And 5 times 3 is 15, and 15 minus 6 is 9. So again, any time that x is equal to 3 in this function, we're going to get the answer of 9. And usually you can start seeing a pattern in here as well um, on the y side. So we've got 1, 2, 3, it each goes up 1. But on this side, each of these goes up 5 now. So negative 1 to 4 is 5 away. 4 to 9 is also 5 away. Now what if we had one that was a little bit different? So again, we've got f of x equals negative x minus 5. A little bit different problem. But this time, we have the f of x values. We've got the y values. Now, all that you're doing differently is before, when it was x, you plugged into the x values. This time, though, we're saying that this entire thing, all of f of x is equal to negative 8, negative 1, and 2. So what you will do is you'll remove this entire f of x and replace it with that number. So as you can see here, f of x was removed and was replaced by negative 8. Now we just have an equation. So we would add 5 to both sides, which would give us negative 3 equals a negative x. To make that x positive, we can divide by negative 1, and we get the opposite of negative 3 would be a positive 3 equals x and that simply goes over into our table as well. Now on the next problem, we see that negative 1 is f of x. So again, this f of x is going to be completely removed and replaced by the negative 1. So negative 1 took the place of f of x. The opposite of subtracting 5 from both sides would be to add 5 to both sides, which leaves us with 4 equals a negative x. The opposite of a negative 4 or I'm sorry, the opposite of 4 would be a negative 4, and by dividing by negative 1 on both sides, that would give me a x equals negative 4, and that would go to our table as well. And lastly, the 2 is going to completely replace the f of x as well. The opposite of subtracting 5 would be to add 5, and we end up with 7 equals a negative x. Divide by a negative 1 on both sides, and we're left with x equals a negative 7. So as you can see with the tables, they're not very difficult. You just got to make sure that you see where you are inputting either the x or the f of x. All right, and these are my favorite, evaluating functions with graphs. It can look a little confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's probably the easiest problems in this whole entire lesson. And they're kind of fun to do. So this is a graph right over here. And what it's saying is find the following um, f of 2, f of negative 2, f of 0, and f of 1. Now remember, this entire thing is y. So really what this is saying is 
what is the y value when x equals 2? What is the y value when x equals negative 2? What is the y value when x equals 0? And what is the y value when x equals 1? So let's go back to the stop one. Again, we're looking for the y value. So first thing that I would suggest is find the x value. Find the x value, and it is right here. So you see the x line is here. I'm just going to put a dot right there for now. And it says, okay, when there is anything that is a uh, 2 that is an x, what is y? And so really, all you have to do is just draw a line down here. I'm, it's going to be terrible, but that's about as straight as I can go. And I look right there, and I say, okay, here's my line, and here is everything that is x equals 2. So at what point do I intercept with the graph? And that's actually right here. So you can see that the graph intercepts with 2 right at that point. So what that is saying is that when the x is 2, y is going to be 4. Okay, so let's look at another one. Now this time we're going to find the negative 2. So I see negative 2 is right here. And if I'm going to draw a very terrible line all the way down, there we go, somewhat straighter. You just put another dot on where did it cross the graph. And I see that it's right here on the graph. So at, when x is negative 2 then, we see that y is a negative 4. So as you can see, x is negative 2. It's right here. And we come all the way down until we find the, a point on the graph. And we see that once we find that point, it lines up with negative 4. Now, the 0 one's a little bit different because if I put a dot at 0, and I was, it doesn't even, I don't even need to draw a line up and down because right where that dot is, there is already, a, the graph is already going through the 0. So what that means is that when x is 0, y is also going to be 0. And finally, let's do one with f of 1. So I, I'm going to erase that. I can see that 1 is right here. So I'm just going to put a dot on the x line. Then I'll try my best to draw a line all the way through. And I just draw a line all the way down the y or the x equals 1. And then I look for a point at where does the graph um, cross that line. And it's kind of similar to the 0. Look right here. Right where I put my dot, the line goes right through it, right on 0. So that means anytime x equals 1, it's going to be 0 for the y. So it's the exact same thing. So let's try another one, OK? So for f of 0, I'm going to find a point, and here's 0. 0 is right there, right in the very middle. And if I follow all this line all the way down, I can see every y value that has 0. However, my concern is where does it intercept the graph? And if I follow this line all the way down, I see that the graph intercepts the y, or I'm sorry, the, the 0, um, the x equals 0, right here. So what this is saying is that any time that x is 0 in this function, y has to be 2. All right, so let's try another one. Let's find f of 5. So I come all the way over to 5. I'm just going to put a dot there for now. And I need to go all the way down until I find a point on the graph. So I'm actually just going to draw a short line this time. And right there is where I finally hit the graph. And I'm just going to put a dot there. So what this is saying is that when x equals 5, y has to equal a negative 3. y has to equal a negative 3 at that point. OK, so let's try negative 4. 
So I come over here, I see negative 4. I'm just going to draw a line all the way up until it hits the line. I'm just going to put a darker dot right there. So it hit it right there. And this is saying that every time that x is a negative 4, y has to be a positive 6. All right, and very last one. f of negative 2, I'm just going to put a dot there. And I'm going to, again, draw it all the way up to where it intersects. And I'm going to put a dot right on the line. And it says that any time that x is negative 2, y is going to have to be a positive 4. A positive 4. And that's it. So take a few minutes and try this pro these problems out on Edpuzzle because they will, um, if you can do well on these, you'll do well on your assignments. And if you're still struggling with this, there are some great problems on Khan Academy, very similar to these, that can help you practice this as well. As always, if you have any questions, let me know and I will answer those questions.